Okay, this is the 2020 CBR1000RR-R SP, the new bike, the pirate bike, whatever you want to call it. Okay, right away, I feel the, uh, I can tell, like the pegs are higher. I'm not sure if this is a placebo or what, but I also feel like I'm sitting a little bit higher than on the previous bike. The tank is actually lower than before. So you got more room to get into a tuck. Okay. And we're gone. Hey everybody, welcome to Thunder Hill Raceway and this, the 2021 Honda CBR 1000RR R Fireblade. I'm sure I mixed up the order of those letters and words, but whatever, you know what this is. The uh, Triple R Fireblade, the pirate bike, whatever you want to call it. What Honda's calling it is their most advanced 1000cc production leader bike they've made so far with heavy influences from the RC 213V MotoGP bike, most notably the winglets you see on the front there. But a lot of that technology from MotoGP has gone all through this motorcycle. And in fact, I can't think of all the specs off the top of my head. So here's a clever voiceover where I will describe all the changes they've made to this, the all new 2021 1000 RRR Fireblade. The all new 1000 Triple R Fireblade SP is an all new bike from the ground up and that all starts with the engine. Honda wanted to make this engine more compact and more powerful than the one it replaces. And that starts with the 81 mil bore, which is the same as MotoGP uses this year too. There's a 48 and a half millimeter stroke. And so overall, it's a more over square engine compared to the old CBR, which had a 76 millimeter bore and a 55 millimeter stroke. But beyond that though, to reach the more compact goals it was going for, one of the clever things Honda engineers came up with was to use a semi cam gear train. And all that really means is uh, running the cam timing gears instead of from the crankshaft, from idle gears on top of the crankshaft. Overall, it allows the cam chain to be shorter, lighter, and more durable, which is a good thing considering the engine is higher revving than before. Also, the starter is packaged a little bit differently from before. Now the starter engages with the clutch main shaft rather than the crankshaft itself to turn on the engine. So there's some more engine details like the roller rockers. Roller rockers help for a higher red line as well. Um, in the case of the new CBR1000 Triple R, friction is also reduced because of the diamond-like coating that they apply to the camshaft lobes. And so not only does the engine use roller rockers, but the intake and exhaust valves are also bigger than before to help let more air in and let more air out. Compression ratio is a really high 13.2 to 1, and the larger crank journals and optimized wall thickness minimize deflections in the crankcase and the crankshaft. Going inside the engine even further, the pistons themselves are forged aluminum pieces. Uh, obviously these are lightweight, strong, and durable. The connecting rods themselves are forged titanium for strength and lightweight and durability. And because this is a high performing engine, Honda had to rethink how it managed the temperature for the entire engine itself, including the piston oil piston jets underneath the pistons themselves. Now there's a check ball, so for low RPM usage, there's no oil being sprayed underneath the piston for cooling because you don't need it. At high RPMs, when there's a lot of heat going on, uh, the check ball moves, oil is allowed to be sprayed underneath the pistons, and it covers a wider swath than the uh, jets from the previous generation CBR1000. So further temperature management also includes a redirecting of um, hot water, hot radiator coolant. Um, it goes now around the bottom of the cylinder to help make the overall temperature across the cylinder, cylinders I should say, more consistent and more even. But another advantage of the redirecting of the coolant is it also, in this new configuration, allows the removal of an external hose, which then again helps with the overall goal of making the engine more compact. 
So for this new Triple R, you'll notice uh, the air intake, RAM air intake. How, what Honda did in this particular case is removed your typical key tumbler on the ignition and now it uses a smart key and removing the key ignition tumbler from its usual traditional spot helps with a more direct path of air for the air to travel from outside through the uh, ram air intake and then into the uh, engine itself. Then once they get to the engine, the throttle bodies are bigger. You've got 52 millimeter throttle bodies up from 48 from before and the throttle butterfly valve is brought closer to the intake valve to help improve throttle response. The intake valve angle is reduced to 9 degrees from 11 and this allows uh, the intake port to give more efficient flow of air into the engine. In fact, uh, Honda says the intake is improved, the efficiency of the intake is improved by 2%, which, you know, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you're searching for the next tenth, every little bit counts. So moving on to the frame of the motorcycle itself, the quote unquote diamond framed is made from aluminum with two millimeter thick in certain areas. And the upper cross member is removed to allow uh, more flexibility and more feel for the rider. Uh, the old bike, there's a uh, cross member on the rear of the frame, which Honda engineers decided wasn't necessary this time around. That just kind of goes to show the uh, f how finicky riders and testers can be with their feedback. Overall, Honda says the vertical rigidity is increased by 18%, the torsional rigidity is increased by 9%, and the horizontal or the side-to-side -side rigidity is reduced by 11%, again, uh, just to provide more feel uh, according to what the test riders Honda has, what they wanted and what they suspected would help benefit and make that change. The rear shock itself is actually mounted to the engine to help reduce loads on the frame and the subframe is mounted to the top of the frame rather than the sides of the frame to help reduce width a little bit. That's of course a, a light, lightweight thin aluminum piece. Now moving to the swing arm you have a longer swing arm than before. It's 30.5 millimeter longer than the previous generation CBR1000, but it's the same weight as before. Honda says the horizontal rigidity is reduced by 15%, but still maintains the same vertical rigidity, again, just for feel. It's even the same manufacturing technique that they use on the RC213V MotoGB bike. Altogether, the swing arm is comprised of 18 individual thicknesses of pressed aluminum, which is, uh, you know, you don't appreciate that standing outside the bike, but it's one of those things Honda felt the need to tell you about. Of course, you probably want to know if these winglets actually do anything, and while I really don't have any scientific evidence to tell you one way or the other, I can give you a, an impression from my seat of the pants impression. And there's a section at Thunder Hill where you go from turn one to turn two, and there's a little short shoot with a slight rise in the road. And now riding the old bike, if you come out of turn one just right, you come over that crest and the front end gets a little bit light and you do a little bit of a wheelie. Hopping on this new bike, the Triple R Fireblade, coming out of turn one, hard on the gas, coming over that rise, the front end felt pretty planted and solid and didn't feel like it was coming up at all. Now, is that a function of the winglets? I don't really know for sure. Is that a function of the anti-wheelie or wheelie control functions? I'm not totally positive. Or did I just come out of that turn a little bit differently from before and wasn't in the right rev range to get the front end in the air over that lip? Hard to really say. However, that was my seat of the pants impression hopping straight off of the old bike onto the new bike and hitting that same section of road. So you can make your own conclusions there. All right, so now that's out of the way, let's get to the ride impressions of this, the, uh, the new Fireblade. Now you've probably already seen videos of reviewers in Europe talking about this bike because they got this bike a few weeks, months back, and it's taken a while for this bike to hit America because, uh, well, as far as distribution goes, America is getting this bike later than Europe and the whole COVID-19 crisis has delayed things even further. That's why the uh, US market's talking about this bike now because 
they're finally getting this bike. What you get is quite a remarkable package. If you have experience with the previous CBR1000, and especially the previous uh, CBR1000 SP, there's a lot of familiar traits and characteristics between the two bikes. Oh, let's see, elbow down. a testament to how good these Super Corsa SP tires are. Little elbow down action on a street tire. But back to the Honda previous generation Honda CBR 1000 RR SP. The, this engine is a less over square definitely feels pretty punchy in the mid-range but this one the new one just kind of takes those takes those traits and kind of amplifies it by like one and a half it's not huge steps ahead but like when you combine all of the little things that they've done better or improved upon or tweaked or changed the sum of its parts becomes this massive change between the two and i should clarify uh, honda says there are no shared components between the 2021 bike you see here and the previous model this is an all new bike it's an all new frame it's an all new swing arm it's a whole new engine like head to toe completely different motorcycle oh yeah baby i could feel the abs bringing the lever back away from me like it's pumping itself, but it wasn't so intrusive. Yeah, man, that's so exhilarating. Honestly, I have got no idea if these winglets are doing anything for my front-end confidence. It feels great, don't get me wrong. What I do know is this TC is working overtime in this number one setting to make sure I don't kill myself. So, uh, I appreciate that, Honda, thank you. Up over here. Ah, it's kicking in again. And for me, what I noticed riding this bike is you get on it, and the distance from the seat to the bars feels shorter. I feel like I'm more over the front tire. The fuel tank sits about 40 mil lower compared to the old bike, so you can get in that tuck and just get lower down than you could before. Um, it's more compact uh, in the waistline. It's all these little changes just to focus on, on racetrack performance for both you and the motorcycle. What I didn't like so much was this space right here. There wasn't a whole lot of space to scooch backward in a tuck. And so my knees would be touching my elbows in a tuck and I couldn't bring them as close together as I'd like. But those are little minor gripes, right? This thing hauls ass. It is fast. Thunder Hill is one of the few places in California that you can wind out a 1000cc bike here. And when you wind this thing out, the mid-range is super strong. And then it just goes up top. It's got an 81 mil bore versus the, I think it was 77 bore on the previous bike. So it's way over square and it revs higher. About 14.5 is the red line on this bike. And this thing loves to scream and it takes off and goes. Um, handling wise, the old bike wasn't too bad. You could turn it quickly, hold the line well. Uh, this one just feels that little bit more precise, a little bit more sure of itself. Part of that stability comes from, well, you have a longer swing arm and an overall 
longer wheelbase, which adds um, stability when you're turning the bike. The rake is a little bit lazier than before. You have a little bit more trail for also stability. So it sounds like this should steer slower, but man, from the seat of the pants, I surely couldn't feel it. It was changing directions real well, holding its line with more confidence than before. And then when you get on the gas and you exit the corner, you can get on it, spin it up, have the TC down low, holding it back a little bit, but still driving and you feel like a hero because you're just on it and you're just letting the rear do its thing and helping you steer the bike. And you know in the back of your mind you're not going to get launched to Jupiter because the uh, computer is keeping things in check. Not too long ago, the TC and electronic systems were a hindrance. A little waggle, a little waggle, up into the blue. And I suppose if you are like a top, top level pro, you're still gonna turn all these things off because you can still do it better with your right wrist. But for myself and pretty much, you know, anyone who's not a pro level racer, having this sophisticated electronic package is, is a godsend. You have the latest IMU systems in here, uh, electronic suspension, I mean, all this stuff combined just works wonders and miracles. And then, Let's just look at this thing for a second. It looks, I think this looks killer. It's such a good looking motorcycle. I really, really dig this bike. Honda's finally taken the category seriously with this and building a legit contender, I think. Uh, we'll see what race teams think. Uh, BSB is doing really well with this bike, so there you go. Yeah, there is so much to talk about this bike, but the overall feeling here is it rips. It is such a good bike. Without having the competition here to ride back to back to back, it's hard to really rank this thing, but just new bike versus old bike, the new one, like I said, all the little changes add up to one big change. And you, I haven't taken lap times, but you've got to imagine those little changes that make up one big change results in a motorcycle that just is really fun to ride for one, super stinking fast and just, combines to this package that works extremely well. The kicker though, the kicker is the $28,500 price tag. Ooh, we're playing in like Ducati territory now. And um, I don't know, I, without having one here to ride back to back, who knows? I can't tell you if it's better or worse or indifferent. But what I can tell you is that for this price point, there are some things about this Honda that just don't make sense to me. First of all, it uses rubber brake lines still. 28.5 and you're getting a motorcycle with rubber brake lines, that just doesn't seem right. Furthermore, the Honda still uses cast wheels. For this price point, you know, other players in this game are using forged aluminum wheels and it only seems right if you're paying this kind of cash to get forged wheels as well. But we're playing in European bike territory now and uh, once you're getting into this sort of upper echelon of the price ranges, it, it, you got to get serious about it and this bike is definitely serious so i can't wait to put this thing against the the, the price c competitively priced competition and see which one comes out on top but this thing's a ripper it's a screamer and uh man i just love more time on this thing we rode it with the stock pirelli super corsa sp tires nobody went down you tell about slick tires and softer compounds right there? Yeah. The good thing about this tire is you don't need more much for it to go out and all that. Yeah, yeah. The electronics did a great job of making sure the rear didn't just slide out and spin me to the moon, yet they still drove and gave great grip, and that front never protested at all, all day, which just goes to show how awesome street tires like these Super Corsa SPs from Pirelli have come. Uh, I could go on and on and on. You probably don't want to hear that anymore. So be sure to go to motorcycle.com, read my full review there. And uh, when I get a chance to fully download my brain, you'll, you'll see my thoughts there. But the short version, this thing's a ripper. It's really good. Anyway, that's it for me from Thunder Hill on the new CBR1000RRR Fireblade from Honda. And yeah, see you later. Oh yeah, baby. Over the prize. And don't hit the photographer. Don't hit the photographer.
photographer.